This video is brought to you by my wonderful patrons. If you want to join the Patreon team, please feel free to click the link down below. And if not, I hope you enjoy the video. Have you ever had a bad day? And it seems like all the odds are against you. The weather, emotions, and even other people. Those certain days where no matter what you seem to do or say, it seems like you've been chosen to endure the worst it can offer, and it's entirely out of your control. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is seen as one of the greatest horror films of all time. No matter how you truly feel about it, you can't deny its legacy changed horror forever. Whether you see it as a commentary on vegetarianism or an allegory for the Vietnam War, you can't deny its intriguing world and even sequences of horror that inspired hundreds of filmmakers that we see to this day on the cinema screen. The film has a reputation of being one of the most infamous and even raw horror movies of all time, despite actually hardly showing gore or even blood, and that's just a testament to the director Toby Hooper and of course the brilliant cinematography from Daniel Pearl. Their unmatched abilities to convey a sense of dread and violence by just using sharp visuals and even intriguing sounds. The world of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is buried deep within reality. The events itself are commonly confused by the real world events of Ed Gein, an infamous serial killer who turned human remains into furniture and even wore women's skin as masks and even costumes. But despite this common comparison, Toby Hooper the director has gone on record to say that a lot of it was by chance. The Gein's killings really had nothing to do with the writing of the film. There are endless essays and discussions on this film, which talk about its use in violence and even the stories behind the reasons and why of the Sawyer family do exactly what they do and what led their life to cannibalism. Many speculate it's just pure madness and it's to show us the horrors of this world and what people could truly be like in uncivilized areas. But what have I told you that I feel like there is something greater here that's beyond our understanding? The Mind, Cthulhu, HP Lovecraft, The Void, Color Out of Space, Event Horizon, The Thing, or even Alien itself. But there's a lot more to cosmic horror than just beings from outer space. It's the fear of the unknown and something we don't understand, and definitely there is something cosmic about the universe of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. There is almost an atmosphere to this film that feels often otherworldly and even sometimes feels like there's a cosmic interference with human affairs. I have actually done some research and digging and I strongly believe that Texas Chainsaw Massacre could possibly be one of the most subtle cosmic horrors out there with a touch of Lovecraft to even add to the film's events. So let's go back to that scorching hot summer's day of August 18th, 1973. The film's credits can be seen as an avant-garde pattern designed to make you feel uncomfortable and even sick at some points. But in reality, this is actually just the sun, with solar flares dancing around its orbit. And the sun rises on that day with a green and even yellow flare, and immediately you can tell that this is going to be an odd, weird and possibly a bad day. The film opens truly with the image of a corpse being displayed in a gruesome and even inhuman position. And while the audience are left surprised and shocked by this imagery, there is a news report discussing recent events in grave robins in the area. The report continues during the main credits also, reporting a gas shortage and a recent explosion, a cholera outbreak within the country, riots breaking out in certain counties, a 16 storage building collapsing, and these are all sewn into the background as we are introduced to our main characters. In the Blu-ray commentary, director Toby Hooper said that it was just a bad day for the Earth at that time. He wanted to create a feeling of dread and hopelessness within the world, and it brilliantly works not just within the visuals, but also the audio. And whether you hear it or not, he definitely gets that feeling of dread and death across within the first five minutes of the film. Astrology, horoscopes, and of course zodiacs. This is all the belief that the universe and stars play an important part in human behavior, both positive and even negative effects that can connect our personalities with the natural world and depending on their star signs in the zodiac chart. I think that's correct. I don't actually know, I'm not actually into all this. I personally don't believe in this idea, but for the purpose of the video and the reality of the world of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it's important to pay attention to the details of astrology during the film's intro. The first real batch of character dialogue is with a character named Pan, the hippie astrologer, explaining to our characters that Saturn right now is in retrograde with the Earth and the Sun and of course the Zodiac chart. 
meaning that its effects and negative effects and sometimes even positive effects are being felt by people on Earth who may fall under the star signs that are controlled by Saturn, if that makes any sense. We're explained in the movie as well that Saturn is believed to be a malefic planet and during its retrograde period it casts an unfavourable influence on people who are born under the star signs of Capricorn and plays a role with one of our main characters unfortunately. And is in that respect evil. Hence, when malefic planets are in retrograde and Saturn's malefic, okay, their malefice is increased. During this scene we meet our protagonists of the film and most notably the two main characters Sally and her disabled brother Franklin. Franklin comes across as a bit childish, rude and of course very sensitive. He's clearly an irritation that the rest of the group doesn't want to be around but despite everything Sally is the worst influence for this group right now, not in personality but of course her star sign. Sally is a Capricorn which explained by Pam Oh no, Capricorn's ruled by Saturn. There are moments when we cannot believe that what is happening is really true. Pinch yourself and you may find out that it is. But though she's the one who's deemed to have the bad day, Franklin also has his horoscope read to him and in quote, is in for a disturbing and unpredictable day. We see Franklin fall, get slashed, left behind and even catch himself in his wheelchair and this all leads up to of course his uninevitable death. The dialogue with the star sign can be so easily forgotten through the excitement of the rest of the film. We're so focused on the idea of the film being a slasher movie that you completely forget about the astrology side introduced to us in the first few minutes. From the first shot of the sun to the last, and even the sun and the moon themselves play a role within this narrative. Sally has been warned of a day that will be so bad that it will film like a bad dream and the sun only acts like a clock to remind Sally of destruction and even more interestingly it's a reminder for the Sawyers family's success and what they must do before the next day. When we first meet the hitchhiker, that is his name by the way, his character is just called the hitchhiker, he seems to be well embedded with the world of madness, talking about death and self harm like it's his normal day to day. When we meet him he proceeds to cut himself, take a picture of Franklin and then burn it and in what seems to be a case of just a mental freakout, he then proceeds to mark a car with some sort of marking that our characters don't understand and us as the viewer will never truly explore or even get an answer to of what it could mean. But this is where I feel the inspiration of a Lovecraft story comes into play and of course his cosmic influences play their role inside this universe. But the true epicure and the terrible to whom a new thrill of unutterable ghastliness is the chief end and justification of existence, esteems most of all the ancient lonely farmhouses of backwoods New England. For there the dark elements of strength, solitude, grotesqueness, and ignorance combine to form the perfection of the hideous. In the Lovecraft story, The Picture in the House, our main character and narrator are riding their bike through Woodfield and forgotten parts of New England. The narrator of the story comes across a lonely and concealed house that he must use for cover of the rain, but despite its abandoned look, it appears to have not have been completely taken back by nature and almost too well kept to be empty. The building then must still be inhabited, despite its isolation and general neglect. However, my rapping evoked no response, so after repeating the summons, I tried the rusty latch and found the door unfastened. Hello? And as our narrator enters the building, he learns that there's a smell of disgust, but at the same time, something rather intriguing about the furniture and even layout of the building. It appears to be covered in 18th century American Revolution decor, and he learns that an old man lives there and has lived there on his own and retained to keep the place in good order despite of his age. We as the reader and the narrator learn that this man covets a book that has shown him how to butcher and even harvest human flesh to be able to live forever or at least extend your life. And the old man has been doing this for well over a century, even before the American Revolution. And that's what brings me back to the Sawyer family, Leatherface, the hitchhiker, the cook and then of course Grandpa. It may be all by chance, but when we first see Grandpa alone in the attic, he's sitting across a decaying corpse that clearly has been there for a long while. But we've made to believe that he is also dead too, but somehow he's still alive and remains to be alive despite the look of his rotting body. 
And of course it may just be down to the practical effects and the makeup of him looking like he's a rotting corpse. Of course it's just a 19 year old actor in prosthetics. But actually listening to the commentary of the film, Toby Hooper also wanted to give off the effect that he looked like he was decaying away and he looked like he was almost dead. Just like in the Lovecraft story, we also learn that the family are two cannibals. And they even show us Grandpa at one point sucking on Sally's finger, which seems to give him more movement and even more life than he had before he even sucked on it, which is gross by the way. And the cook says something in the final table scene that really made me think of all this being more than just madness. He says, Shut your mouth! You don't understand nothing. Just some things you gotta do. Don't mean you have to like it. <gasps> what did he mean by saying they didn't understand? And why did they have to do it? I have a theory and belief that they could possibly worship something that seems to be allowing this family to live on forever and well past their expected Dubai date. But they must eat human flesh and of course human blood to retain their youth or at least retain their age and continue living on. In the same way that we see grandpa wasting away. I believe that all this possibly could have started after the mother died. Maybe they didn't want to lose grandpa as of course clearly we see that they praise him a lot and of course the family itself despite all the abuse and of course all the well cannibalism they seem to be pretty close knit and really do depend on each other so of course after grandmother died they wanted to look into some sort of way that they can keep grandpa alive and of course keep the family going for years throughout the film we also see rituals left behind as i said the marking on the back of the van and even obscure bone structures and symbols left behind and why not even that decaying corpse that the film opens with? Why was this not just a warning of what these people are capable of, but instead it's some sort of sacrifice or ritual to be able to get them their next meal, to be able to continue whatever they've been doing? As mentioned, the radio talks about a gas shortage, which seems to be a miracle or some sort of coincidence, meaning the Sawyers themselves also own a gas station. And it clearly leads innocent people straight into their gas station trap, being able to leave a marking on the back of the van so they know exactly who to look out for. When our characters turn up at their gas station, we see this guy just sitting outside. He's not part of the family, but he seems to be looking at something. He's looking at the sun almost like a reminder of time, or almost like he knew exactly what was coming next. He knew exactly what victims to look out for, and maybe he too all plays a part in this ritual of whatever this is. But let's talk about the sun and of course the moon. They play their role in frames almost like an observer of fate of our characters. Each character that falls victim to the hammer is seen walking towards and even alongside the sun in frame. It's all entirely intentional of course by the brilliant cinematography. It's like it's leading them to the Sawyer estate and it's leading them to their doom. But when it's Sally and Franklin's turn to make a move, the moon has risen and has become clouded. The moon itself acts as a symbol and a part of Sally and her end of the day, acting as a reminder that the day itself is still continuing but there is hope for tomorrow, and whatever state she appears to be in, the moon itself reflects her character. When she is confused and scared, it becomes clouded and covered. When she decides to take action, it becomes clear and more focused. When she's knocked out, scared and of course suffering, it becomes blurred and unfocused. There is a cosmic presence that is at play here and it commands the Sawyer's victims and even the Sawyer's themselves during this strange day. And when Sally finally makes her escape into the next day, a new sun has risen and the horoscope predictions and even the retrograde could be over and that was all from yesterday and now a new one has begun all over again. Sally all of a sudden is faced with luck, other people driving around and somehow turning up just at the right time to make her daring escape, though despite the day before there was hardly another car in sight. And as Sally escapes and only hopes whatever happened was a bad dream, we see Leatherface dancing towards the sun in madness, anger, or even excitement for what a new day could possibly bring for the Sawyer family. 
Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like down below. Um, if you want to hear me do a lot more of these movie reviews, feel free. And not all of these are going to be theory or, you know, the, these sort of conspiracy type sort of things. Uh, but I thought it was just an interesting idea because it was brought to my attention on Twitter that there is a lot of cosmic undertones within this film. And a lot of people do agree with this. And I thought it was quite interesting to see that not many people have discussed it through YouTube. So I thought, hey, why not take the opportunity and see if I can share it through YouTube. And I hope people enjoy it. I hope people get to see exactly what it's like for me to do movie related stuff and if you want me to do more of it of course let me know down below and please leave a comment and of course if you want to subscribe for more videos like this every single week please feel free and go ahead and i will see you at the next checkpoints goodbye